Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome uh, to the discussion of the 2016 general fund budget uh, as it affects the committees and departments that I chair, which are development, utilities, and safety. Uh, this will be uh, a public hearing, and any of those that wish to pull speaker slips and speak at the end of the hearing will have the opportunity to do so. There are blue slips over in the corner. You can fill those out and provide them to either uh, Ms. James or Ms. Space, and we'll make sure in the order that they are pulled, we'll have the opportunity uh, to discuss uh, and speak on whatever topic as it relates to these three committees that there are. So our first presentation is from the Department of Development, and I see Director Shoney here. Director Shoney, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you for the opportunity to present today. I'm going to give an overview of the entire Department of Development budget. Um, this will cover some areas that are beyond the scope of uh, this committee, however, uh, since this committee covers the bulk of the department, I felt it was worthwhile to go ahead and cover uh, the entirety of what the department does. Um, the department's budget as a whole is a $34.8 million budget comprised of a multitude of funding sources, most prominently the general fund, the community development block grant fund, and the emergency human services fund. Our budget overall within the um, general fund and CDBG is essentially flat with 2.23% growth. When you factor in the emergency human services funding, we see a 3% growth in funding over the next year. In terms of our um, areas of expense, the department is almost evenly split between personnel and um, services and subsidies to other organizations. Uh, this makes sense with how we're structured when you look at having a large group such as code enforcement, which is primarily personnel, folks out on the street, um, inspecting homes, um, looking at properties, dealing with environmental nuisance abatement, our economic development team, which is fairly labor intensive. Most of our subsidies come in the form of human services subsidy and housing subsidy. Um, it should also be noted within this that the budget for incentives is budgeted through the Department of Finance. So our payments through the jobs growth incentive um, and the downtown office incentive run are budgeted in finance. Um, you will see a difference when you look at our actual expenditures at the end of the year because the actual expenditures are then transferred to the Department of Development and it shows up in our actuals. So if you're studying our budget, it does lead to some confusion and anomaly that I'd be happy to explain if you ever wanted to get to that level of detail. By division, um, our expenses, we spend about 9% of our budget on administration. Uh, that would be um, the director's office, uh, our finance and accounting and contracts teams. Within, if you look at our budget, administration also includes um, a number of program services. Uh, that includes the land bank, it includes, which is also known as land redevelopment office, it includes our human services funding, it includes the neighborhood liaisons, it includes the neighborhood pride program. For purposes of being more clear about what we're spending on pure administration versus programming, we've separated that out here. So we spend about 9% on administration, 20% on those program services which are housed within the director's office. Uh, code enforcement is about 25% of the department's budget, economic development about 13%. Housing is 26% and then planning is the remaining 5%. Turning to code enforcement specifically, um, our budget there is uh, gen genuinely flat, a 8.6 or $8.7 million budget. We've had a good year in code. Um, this has been a year of consolidation for us. Uh, if you'll recall, last year we added the proactive code enforcement teams, both looking at um, chronic landlord violators as well as doing proactive code enforcement in neighborhoods. That um, experience has gone very well. We're seeing good um, reception from the neighborhoods and positive response in terms of behavior by landlords. We're seeing some landlords choose not to, um, some landlords that have had problems choosing to divest not participate in uh, the market here, and we think that's a good thing. For land redevelopment, um, the operating budget show for general fund and CDBG shows a slight decrease of 2.5%. Uh, some of that is due to a shift in funds from um, the operating and CDBG, the general fund and CDBG budgets to the land redevelopment fund, which is, uh, we've shifted some personnel expenses into that fund. Typically that fund has been used for, primarily that fund is used to pay for maintenance um, and 
operations of the large portfolio of properties that we own through the Land Redevelopment Office. Uh, it should be noted that we did just hit our goal of um, demolishing 900 of the worst of the worst uh, structures through our vacant and abandoned properties program. Um, our hope is that we will be um, focusing less on demolition and more on stabilization and rehabilitation. Uh, as I've noted in other conversations before, that's a capital budget um, issue as much as it is an operating budget, and we'll be talking about that further in the new year. In housing, um, we are uh, we have a flat general fund budget uh, decrease of 8.5 percent in our CDBG funding uh, for a total of 3.4 percent decrease. This budget is somewhat in flex because it is dependent upon federal appropriations. Um, we're hearing news literally just today um, that the Senate has passed a bill that is strong on the CDBG funding, um, weak on what are called home dollars, which aren't reflected in this chart. We'll be back with you as that all shapes out. It is um, a continuing challenge that we are seeing a decrease in federal funding for um, CDBG and home. Uh, we've, we know um, all the statistics that were short, as many as 54,000 uh, affordable housing units within the central Ohio market. We need to do more on housing. Um, we've been working with advocates to explore ways to do things more efficiently and find new ways to generate capital for the housing market. But it's an area where we have more to do with limited funding. Uh, our uh, policy and planning office um, is um, also a fairly uh, flat budget. The 7% increase here that you see is full funding for a year with our Celebrate One planner that was added last year. Last year's funding was only for a partial year. Uh, that is part of um, uh, Council President Ginther's uh, um, infant mortality initiative. Um, as I said in Council Member Tyson's hearing on the overall budget, that experiment has gone very well. We're learning a lot about how to manage projects in neighborhoods through the Celebrate One process, and it's a lesson we're looking to take to other neighborhoods and really perhaps rethink how we manage our interactions with neighborhoods and make sure that we're taking a department-wide, have someone who's really taking a department-wide comprehensive look at every um, neighborhood of the city. So that's something that we're really trying to learn from. Finally, uh, finally, yes, finally, the economic development budget um, uh, shows a increase of 12.8%, um, a large increase in the uh, general fund dollars, um, a significant decrease in CDBG, and um, a, um, oh, sorry, I forgot to flip the slides. Um, uh, and a balancing out of 12.8 percent increase. That increase is um, largely due to the fact that we have shifted the small business liaison position from building and zoning services to the Department of Development. Uh, we think that will do a better job of consolidating all of the city's small business programming. Um, finally, we do a lot of partnerships through our department. Um, the bulk of these partnerships are continuations of things that we have done in the past. Columbus 2020 is essentially the city's outsourced sales and marketing arm, uh, where we work with them very closely to market the region and market the city and the sites that we have for job creation. Rev1 Ventures was formerly known as Tech Columbus. Uh, they are doing everything they can to help create um, the next generation of high growth businesses in the city. Columbus Next Generation is our um, uh, public-private partnership where we work on land redevelopment uh, throughout the city, but in particular in our distressed neighborhoods. Partners Achieving Community Transformation, or PACT, there is an increase in this line item to reflect um, the commitments that Mayor Coleman uh, had made in conjunction with OSU. Previously, that line item had been $200,000. It has been up to $250,000 this year per those agreements. The Discovery District Creative Campus is uh, one of the new things in the budget this year. This is a partnership that we are working on with Columbus State Community College most significantly, but all of the other institutions in the area and many of the property owners in that part of downtown. Um, not only are we suggesting that the city commit $100,000 to this effort, but Columbus State um, is going to match these funds and we are going to be going to the other partners or we have gone to the other partners in that neighborhood to look for additional funds. The purpose of this will really to be putting boots on the ground to um, uh, 
uh, add capacity in that neighborhood to bring plans to fruition. There's been a lot of talk about how much potential there is in the Discovery District, but there hasn't been someone waking up every day figuring out how we get it done in the Discovery District. Um, the reason that the administration is willing to recommend this is because we're seeing good partnership from the partners in the area willing to put skin on the ground. This is something we'll be talking about with you more as the budget creation pro or budget finalization process goes through and look forward to doing that with you. Um, everything else, uh, the only other addition or change in this over last year is Columbus Sister Cities. We're changing our relation with ship, relationship with them somewhat. They are moving out of city-owned space right now where we've been providing a large amount of in-kind services to them. So we've upped uh, our subsidy to them in reflection of the fact that we're not providing as many in-kind services. And also in reflection of the fact that they've been doing more. Um, that we just added a new sister city um, and frankly they have a new executive director who's really trying to take the organization to the next level and we think they're on to good things. With that, that's uh, the total of my overview and be happy to take any questions or um, happy to hear any comments. Thank you, uh, Director Shoney. Uh, there's no comments or questions at this time. Um, I'll reserve the right to come back as questions may pop into my head. Yes, sir. Um, uh, and, and I will say I've been asked by the Department of Public uh, Safety to vacate my space here. Um, and when public safety asks you to vacate your space, you typically do it. So I will understand, move, director. I will be moving to the um, back of the room. Duly noted. Thank Let you. the record reflect that Director Shoney will be moving to the back of the room for Thank public safety. Good. Yes. Okay. When, they, when, when the guys with guns ask you to move, yes. that's what fair I'm enough. Yeah. All right, public safety. Good afternoon, Director Speaks, Chiefs, Deputy, Deputy Director Giannardella, floor is yours, Director. Thank you, uh, Chairman Klein. And we apologize for that messy eviction process, but it was necessary. <laughs> Uh, we are honored to be here to discuss our public safety 2016 budget. Uh, before we continue, uh, I'd like to thank Mayor Coleman, Auditor Dorian, Council, and especially the voters of, of Columbus for their support. We appreciate the budget allocated to public safety as it continues to represent Mayor Coleman's top funding priority. Uh, with me today, as you said before, is Police Chief Kim Jacobs, Fire Chief O'Connor, Support Service Administrator Ramona Patz, and uh, the rest of my public safety physical team. Now the term public safety is rather forthright and simplistic, yet what our employees do is very complex. We are very proud and we are nationally recognized for the quality and dependable safety services that we provide to our citizens and in the maintenance of safe neighborhoods and the way in which we work cooperatively in a partnership with our citizens to minimize injury, death, and property destruction. And this is accomplished by the resources so graciously bestowed on us uh, by council. So let me share with you a few brief stats of what we did with our budget in 2014. The most recent year, 2014 being the most recent year in which uh, we have annual figures. In 2014, the division responded to 100, the division of fire responded to 123,000 emergency calls for service, or an average of 11 calls per day at each of our 32 fire stations. Um, I looked at the numbers this morning. It appears our calls per day are slightly up for this year. It looks like we are running at about 14.9 this year calls for service at our 32 stations. The Division of Police, again in 2014, responded to 700,000 calls for service, or an average of 1,918 per day. During the time it takes to conduct this hearing, Police and fire will respond to an average of 94 calls for service. Both the Columbus Division of Police and Fire have received recognition through an independent international accreditation process, and they are, uh, continue to be nationally recognized as leaders in keeping our citizens safe. 
talk about some of the accomplishments uh, that we've done here in 2015. We renovated and moved to our new police crime lab, state of the art. Continued our upgrade of our 800 megahertz digital radio conversion. Completed the construction of Fire Station 3 on Greenlawn Avenue. Placed five additional EMS response vehicles or medics into service. Placed an additional ladder truck into service on the east side at Station 5. And with your strong leadership as public safety chair, uh, we make various code changes. For example, uh, with your leadership, we enacted a hotel and motel legislation to make those uh, hotels and motels safer for our residents, our neighborhoods, and our out-of-town guests. And I truly believe that legislation is seminal and will spread throughout the nation of the large cities. Likewise, we made code changes under your leadership to massage part of license process to prevent prostitution and human trafficking in our city. We've hired over 20 new 911 call taker positions. We equipped our new police cruisers with anti-idling uh, green technology. We upgraded the helicopters in our division of police. We transferred telephone operations to the Department of Technology. We funded the city's mass notification system through the Franklin County EMA. We continued our civilian, civilianization efforts in police, including an all-civilian new hires in our public records unit. We've had significant, significant community outreach and collaboration by the Division of Police through neighborhood meetings, social media, a multitude of programs, the creation with council's help of diversity inclusion officers, and daily interaction with the community by our standing officers. We've updated our training in de-escalation tactics, crowd control training, and implicit bias. I might add that if you, uh, you may have recently read where Governor Kasich has recommended that law enforcement, uh, new law enforcement officers receive approximately, I believe it was 640 hours of training to be a peace officer. Here in the city of Columbus, it's well in excess of 1,000 hours we require of our officers, and we are proud to be a national leader in training of our police officers. We purchased all new tasers for police, which allows our officers to save lives instead of being forced to use more deadly uh, force in hostile situations. Much accomplished this year, and we hope to do the same next year, as this budget, the proposed budget, will total approximately $558 million, which represents a 2.5% increase over this year. Specifically, the budget allocates $313 million for police, 231 for fire, and six and a half million for support services, and lastly, 6.8 million for administration. Next year, public safety, we estimate we'll lose approximately 70 police officers and 40 firefighters through attrition, but a like number of police officers and firefighters will be hired in 2016 in order to maintain our uh, wonderful staffing level at 1,908 police officers and 1,535 firefighters. Now to do that, police will have two classes of 35 recruits each in June and December, and the Division of Fire will have a recruit class of 40 uh, in the month of June. And let me underscore, and I believe this is a major accomplishment for both the mayor and this council, that unlike many communities across our nation, uh, Columbus is fortunate we are able to maintain our vital staffing for both police and, and firefighters. Some significant funding items uh, in the proposed 26 team budget include the following. Our jail contract with the Franklin County and the Sheriff's Office is at $3.85 million. Our EMS billing contract with our vendor will cost us about $1.8 million, but we anticipate generating approximately $15 million in revenue. $375,000 for our extra eyes and ears in the street, otherwise known as our community crime patrol. 400000 to continue the mayor's coalition against violence throughout our community. $33,000 for crime stoppers. And 200000 for the vital services that the Capital Area Humane Society provides to our city. Our truancy program is funded at $75,000 from the general fund and $50,000 uh, from the drug seizure fund for a total of one hundred and twenty-five. dollars And I might add in the approximately six years of our truancy program, police have picked up thousands of high school age uh, students. It's been very successful. Our minority recruitment budget is at $65,000. 
And again, we have our $750,000, our continuation of our summer safety initiative. And let me go off on a, a quick tangent there with our summer safety initiative. Um, we are very proud of the fact that over the last 10 years, type one crime or violent crime, rape, murder, uh, robbery, aggravated assault, um, the type one crime according to the FBI's national statistics, we are down 29.5%, which is an amazing accomplishment. But at the same time, our population is up uh, 10 to 13%. So an amazing inverse uh, relationship. And I might add that uh, Columbus was recognized this past October when Chief Jacobs attended the major chiefs conference, uh, which the president spoke at. Uh, we, Columbus was recognized of one of only four major cities that did not have an increase in type one crime when one contrasted the first uh, nine months of 2014 with 2013. And I might also add that uh, we have an incredibly robust internal affairs division during that same period when everyone else in the nation's crime is significantly increasing, ours is not only not increasing, but the number of complaints against our officers actually dropped. Let me segue to our support service division and it's 55 employees who are responsible for the repair, the maintenance and the replacement of communications equipment, issuing licenses and ensuring consumer protection by doing such things as verifying the accuracy of our fuel pumps throughout the city, grocery scales and scanners. Uh, the license weights and measures, uh, they're projected to generate approximately a million and a half dollars in revenue through our various fees in 2016. Uh, there are no other significant changes in that budget next year. With respect to vehicles, we work very closely with the fleet management division. And this year, we were able to replace 90 cruisers, four personal transport vehicles, three motorcycles for the traffic bureau, and over four dozen other vehicles for both fire and police. Now, as you know, that generally would drive, um, the large purchases are from the capital fund, and the, uh, the fire division is currently awaiting the delivery of seven new medics, which we had on council uh, this Monday night, uh, two ladders, one hazmat count, uh, vehicle, and one incident support uh, vehicle, which was also on uh, the council agenda last Monday night. So some of the major uh, public safety initiatives uh, that we will continue to embark on is we will work very hard with the chiefs and the unions to manage our overtime. Our total uniform overtime expenditures remain a relatively small percentage of our overall budget. It's about 3.3% of the overall expenditures. And in 2015, the Division of Fire overtime expenses are projected at approximately 8.3 million and police at 9.3 million. But again, when that's uh, contrasted against the overall budget, uh, it comes up to about 3.3%. We will continue to work on uh, our overtime issues, our uh, effective and efficient way in which we should deploy our precious resources. We will continue to utilize technology. As you know, we are looking at body cameras. We utilize cruiser cameras. We have approximately 300 neighborhood safety cameras. Uh, technology is uh, utilized every day with our computer aided dispatching and crime analytical software. This not only improves our operation, but I believe will help to increase transparency and accountability. We will continue to upgrade our police vehicles and fire apparatus, and we will continue to make great strides to ever foster a partnership of trust and understanding uh, with our community. Uh, in closing, public safety greatly appreciates the generous uh, support of council and your leadership this past year. Thank you, Director. A uh, couple comments. Uh, the first, you gave me uh, unfair unilateral praise about the code changes. Uh, safety was a terrific partner in accomplishing those. So thank you to you, uh, Director, personally, uh, as well as uh, the men and women of fire and police that helped draft those code changes, because uh, I do think they're going to be effective uh, tools for cleaning up neighborhoods and helping with victims of human trafficking and hopefully preventing human trafficking in the future. Great teamwork. Uh, I'm sorry? Great teamwork. It was. It was terrific teamwork. And of course, the private sector also stepped up and, and offered their input, which I thought was fair and reasonable. So it was a terrific partnership uh, with the public sector and the private sector in accomplishing what I think is going to be landmark uh, municipal legislation. Uh, the second is, um, 
even though it's in recreation and parks, the efforts that both the men and women of fire and police, and of course with your assistance director in establishing midnight basketball, uh, and the participation of the rank and file uniformed officers in both divisions, uh, and getting out and actually suiting up and playing basketball. I know in one occasion with me and Councilmember Page, uh, we got schooled a couple times, but I think that you know everyone had a great time in those efforts. Uh, and then of course, uh, I wanna give a special thank you uh, to you, Chief Jacobs, for your outreach to the community um, with police and community relations nationally, uh, the tensions being high, uh, having your face in the community and going out to all the zones and answering questions on social media about uh, different policies and procedures, uh, I think goes a long way in establishing and rebuilding where it needs to be rebuilt, the trust between community and the police. Uh, so I appreciate your efforts in doing that uh, and I'm grateful for it and look forward to continuing those dialogues, uh, hopefully annually. Uh, that's all the comments that I have. Any other comments, Director? No, Chiefs. Chiefs, Deputy Director. Okay, thank you, Safety. Thank you. It. And then the final committee that I chair is Utilities, and we have John Lee, the Assistant Director for Fiscal. Mr. Lee, the floor is yours whenever you're ready. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity to present the Department of Public Utilities 2016 operating budget. Overall, the department's budget is a continuation budget of 2015. In 2016, um, we are excited to uh, begin construction on our blueprint uh, initiative. And as you know, on December 1st, we received um, approval from the Ohio EPA to begin implementing our integrated plan. And we will also focus on continued construction on our water treatment plants in 2016 and into the future years. As you know, our department does not receive general fund dollars. We are fee supported. Um, <clears throat> and in my presentation, I will cover the budgets of uh, our four divisions, water, uh, sewer, power, and storm, mainly focusing on water and sewer. And I'll also review some of our upcoming capital projects as those costs are incorporated into our debt service and our bottom line budget. On the revenue side, on water, our base sales for water are comprised of our service and commodity charges, and we're, we're estimating those are gonna grow from 160.9 million to around 161.7 million. And with your support and with council support here recently on November 23rd, uh, council approved our rate increases for 2016. And on the water side, uh, <clears throat> we are received approval for a 4% rate increase, and that will add an additional 5.4 million to the uh, water operating revenue. And with other revenues as part of the water budget, we're looking at about 189 million. And those other revenues are like system capacity charges and sewer billing charges that make up the difference there. On the sewer side, again, our base sales are from our service commodity charges and we're estimating revenue to grow slightly there up to 192 million over 198 million currently. And council approved a 3% increase for 2016, which will add about $5 million in 2016. Other revenues uh, we receive are wet weather charges, system capacity charges, and also uh, the storm fund reimburses um, the sewer fund, and that comes in as a revenue. On storm, again, a slight revenue increase. Rate increases will generate about $330,000, and that was a 1% increase. Uh, on power, uh, council recently passed a rate restructuring ordinance, as you're aware, and basically we were decreasing small commercial rates and establishing a new rate class for the large commercial, and we estimate revenue increases there of around $478 million. Next slide is basically an overview of our uh, division budgets. And as you can see that we worked very hard to keep our budgets low in 2016. Um, 
in total uh, $614 million if you add up all the divisions in 2016 for an overall increase of about 1.5. 7% over 2015 budget amounts. And these, these dollars do include the director's office budget. And the director's office budget is funded by a percentage split that each one of the divisions pay into. And some of the, some of the additional costs we're seeing in 2016 is health care. Uh, we were, worked with the finance department and uh, allowed for a 10% increase in health care costs, mainly for prescription drugs. And also, these budgets obviously support one of our major components, which is debt service. And I'll go into some detail about uh, the debt service in the upcoming slides. Some other highlights on the power division. Uh, one of the major expenses for the power division is our purchase power. Um, that's about $55.8 million that we're estimating in 2016. And overall, the power's budget will allow us to continue to serve about 12,000 customers here in the city and maintain our service requests and 55,000 street lights, continue to keep those lit. Um, right now we are working on an RFP that's due uh, this Friday to actually secure some more uh, energy through 2022. So we're hopeful uh, based on the current rate climate that we see very, very favorable rates going out to 2022. Uh, on the water side, obviously we're gonna continue um, maintaining our distribution system in our plants, providing the highest quality drinking water to the public. Um, right now we serve about 1.1 million customers and continue to provide about 50 billion gallons of finished water annually. Um, in 2016, we will continue to maintain our water lines. Right now we have about 3,500 water lines. Um, and again, service our debt service at 87 million for the water division. On, on the storm side, um, street, street cleaning and snow removal, that's one of the largest expenses on the storm side, and that's basically a reimbursement to the Department of Public Service for them to, uh, to do that service for us, and uh, that's about an $8.3 million cost. And we'll also continue to maintain about 1,700 miles of storm sewer and inspect 15,000 catch basins. Sewer, again, ongoing treatment, wastewater treatment. Right now we treat about 64 billion gallons of wastewater annually. And major component is debt service, paying off the ores project um, and some prior year treatment plant projects. A little more detail on the division of water. As you can see, 56% of the budget is for O&M operations and maintenance, and 44% is for debt service. We are seeing about a 2.3% increase in O&M and 0.1% increase in debt services in 2016. Our budget, we have authorization for 535 full-time equivalent employees, and our budget dollars will support about, we're estimating about 505 employees in 2016, and, and in large part basically due to the 7% vacancy credit that we applied. In the past, we had been applying a 5% vacancy credit, so the 7% vacancy credit is a little bit leaner for us, um, but we are monitoring our personnel very closely. A couple other major costs for the division are chemical costs. Um, that continues to be about 18 million per year in chemical costs and electricity. And with the new upgrades to our plants, we anticipate uh, additional electricity costs going into the future. A uh, couple smaller items, we plan to purchase a couple uh, CNG dump trucks in 2016 and also our debt service of 87 million will allow us to uh, fund about 128 million in CIP projects. We are excited to say that we have uh, nominated about 30 million in OWDA loans and through that program, that allows us to defer principal and interest um, until after project completion. This slide, the water, this shows you our water debt service payments. Over the years, you can see that um, we are to the point where we are with our debt service because we, we built the upground reservoir for 115 million, 
Hapcremine, that's a $76 million treatment plant upgrade. That's still under construction. And we have four contracts right now uh, underway for $100 million at the Dublin Road plant. And then we have another contract, a single contract at Dublin Road for $102 million. And we also have the Parsons Avenue plant project at $65.6 million. So all those projects are ongoing right now, and we are paying the debt service currently. And as you can see, that uh, over the, the slight incline, uh, progressive incline there over the years from 2009 to 2016, and then we kind of level off a little bit as we've done the major work on the water side. Uh, and some of the budget, what the budget will do for us from a strategic priority perspective is uh, one of the things we're going to focus in on is uh, security. Uh, it's very important uh, at all of our plants and facilities, and right now we are doing an ongoing assessment of our infrastructure, um, looking at security plans, developing new security plans, and also installing security systems and cameras and increasing guard protection. Uh, we will continue in 2016 to uh, promote water conservation. We have a lot of uh, literature on our website, and uh, we promote home conservation tips for consumers and uh, also encourage them to check their meter function functionality, see if it's running too slow, um, and also provide, uh, we provide conservation cost comparison. So if you reduce this or that, how much you would save. In 2016, we also work to uh, reduce unaccounted uh, water, and this will be mainly through looking at areas where we have uh, high water loss and doing capital improvement projects to repair those lines and doing meter changes. Uh, we found that doing some meter changes uh, for old meters significantly increases our revenue, uh, largely on the commercial side. And uh, the, the last note there is that we will continue to address our water quality regulations via the uh, improvements at our three water plants. On the division of sewage and drainage, uh, some details on that. You can see that compared to the water side, we have more debt service at 56.8%, uh, a bit higher than on the water side. Uh, O&M and debt service is increasing uh, about 1.3%, and we have about 486 FTEs authorized, which we will not get to that cap. Again, 7% vacancy accredit applied, and that, that accounts for people leaving uh, and, you know, rehiring them. Um, also on the water side is more CNG. We're looking at two Vactor trucks um, to help our sewer maintenance division. And we will continue our septic tank elimination program. A similar slide as I demonstrated for water, as you can see here, right now, the debt service that we're paying annually is supporting our ORS project. That was a $370 million project, and that is nearing completion. And looking ahead, obviously our blueprint program is going to encompass a large portion of our debt service, and we're estimating about $75 million to $100 million annually for that program. Big Walnut is a project that is uh, upcoming in 2016, as well as Black Lick. The Black Lake Project is a major tunnel that will help serve the New Albany area. And uh, the Big Walnut Project will also kind of serve the, the east side of the Hoover Reservoir. And we also have our uh, chemically enhanced primary treatment project that will, um, is a new treatment process at our southerly wastewater plant. And our, upcoming, our priorities, obviously, our blueprint and our first area of focus will be a construction in 2016 in the Clintonville area. Uh, plans are soon to be completed, and uh, we are pleased that uh, we have support from OWDA to uh, fund those projects. As I noted, our septic tank elimination program will continue. Uh, that is where we provide zero interest loans to people to abandon their septic tanks uh, and tap into our sewer system. And 
Also, our project dry basement program has been very successful and that will continue in 2016. Just a quick overview of our rates. Uh, once again, we appreciate council support and your support on passage of those rates for 2016. And just a quick summary of those. Uh, in 2016, we're looking at a 3.3%, 3.31% overall increase to the bill. Uh, if you live inside the city, that would be about an $8.58 increase per quarter. Uh, outside the city, a little bit higher, about 9.92 per quarter. Um, so we will continue our, our low income and senior discount program. Right now we have about 5,000 participants in that program and um, we continue to see increased numbers there. And also as you're aware, we did not increase our capacity charges or our extra strength charges. And I'm happy to report that um, our capacity fees are some of the lowest capacity fees around compared to some of the other local communities around Columbus. And finally, my last slide is just kind of an overview of some of our capital projects, which I've touched on already. Uh, just in total, looking at our CIP for the next five to six years, we're looking at about a $2.02 .2, $2 billion program. And we nominated approximately $277 million in Ohio EPA loans over that term. And so, uh, I covered some of the projects for the sewer, the Blacklick Creek uh, water line. We have an, a, a very um, good program on our improvement, a water line improvement program where we uh, fund that at $30 million and that focuses on small water mains. And we are going to uh, get under construction, design and construction for standby power projects at our Hapkermeen and Dublin road plants and that's basically adds uh, generators at those two plants. We have a few, I highlighted a few storm projects, basically those two are going to mitigate flooding in those areas and we have, uh, we will continue our street light program with some noted projects there on Livingston Avenue and Southside Lions Park. So with that Mr. Chairman, that concludes my summary of the 2016 operating budget. I'd be happy to take any questions you may have. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I don't have any questions because a lot of the stuff that, uh, at least as it relates to Blueprint, which is a significant portion of uh, the investment that the Department of Public Utilities is going to be making, was at a separate hearing that we recently had, and I know we addressed a lot of those. Uh, I appreciate your diligence uh, in getting uh, that information to us. Do we have any speaker slips? Anyone want to speak or pull a speaker slip? You have the opportunity to do so. They're right here. They're blue. You can hand them over to Gretchen or Gina, uh, and we can get you an opportunity to comment on any any of the three departments' budgets. Seeing none, uh, I think that concludes, unless Shoney speaks. Mr. Lee, you have any other comments? That concludes our hearing, then. I appreciate everyone's uh, time and attendance. Talk to you soon. Thank you.